Hello, it's Brian. And Melissa and Waffles. And today we're talking about information for people who might be considering Expedite or new to the industry like we were. Uh, neither one of us were truck drivers before. And we decided to learn the ropes and set out on this industry. And we're going to share some info, things we've learned, and reasons why you might be considering it. Uh, one of those is all you need is your class B license. A class B is a school bus. like a school bus license, right? Um, or a straight truck license. Uh, you can look dump in truck. or dump truck. Yep. You can look into your local uh, school bus programs and see if you can get it that way. Um, or you can find a um, CDL place that a CDL school and most of the time they offer class A and class B. Uh, class B is a whole lot easier to get. Of course, you don't have to do anything with the trailer, um, parking and lane maneuvers. It's just a heck of a lot easier. How long did it take us? It took us probably from start to finish a month because yeah. there are like anything with DMV and classes, there are certain steps you have to do and hoops you got to jump through, but we went through it pretty fast. Yeah. And it's definitely cheaper than getting your class A too. Um, so don't be scared of getting your license. Um, one of the ways we practiced was a moving truck. Yeah. So we went and rented a moving truck for a couple hours and then that way I could practice because I was nervous to do the, uh, <laughs> vehicle walkthrough that you have to do and so that way I could practice and memorize what I was doing and be confident yeah. for when we for when I took the test yeah, which so, I passed first time yeah and she got a better score than me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot easier to practice on something physical especially for your license test when you're pointing out where the air brakes are and uh, the different things of your walk around test and if you've never driven like I had never driven anything this big or, or as big as a moving truck. So it helps me practice backing up and just feeling confident. Yeah. So we rented a truck and did a lot of practice around our hometown before uh, we were doing practicing at the actual testing facility with their equipment. So we were pretty prepared. Um, if you can spend 50, 60 bucks for a day to rent a moving truck, get the biggest one you can, because you'll probably test in a 20 footer. Um, that's what we did, and that was a good way to be prepared. So, right. Um, another thing, if you're considering expedite um, and what it's like, uh, more than likely you'll start out with FedEx. Uh, there's some people that start out with Panther. Very few people start out with Landstar. Um, most people start out with FedEx. That's what we did. One of the really nice things about it is FedEx is self-dispatch, so you're making your own schedule. Uh, you're working off of a load board, uh, which we'll have videos uh, later on about tips and tricks to uh, make the best out of that load board. Um, but no one's calling you and telling you where you have to go. Um, that's actually one of my favorite parts. <laughs> right, so it's self-dispatch in that you can kind of be as busy as you want to be or as slow as you want to be to some degree yeah. of course your fleet w wants you to stay busy yeah but um you do have to be self-motivated because it is easy to get on a netflix binge and not yeah. want to move so you do have we've, to we've be heard stories of squatters <laughs> um to stay to stay busy but it is fun being able to choose to some degree what part of the country you're going to go to next and have a little bit, have more control. Yeah, and you get to always go somewhere different. You're not always going to the same. If we do go to a lot of the same places, um, which is nice because those are really easy pickups when you've been there before or delivered there before. But uh, out of 20 loads, you might go to the same place once, maybe twice at the most. So you get to go all over the place, all over the country. We've been upstate New York, San Francisco, 
and every everywhere in between. Yeah, everywhere in between. Florida. Uh, Another really fun thing about that is that we have friends and family in all different states. And so we've got to stop and see friends and family along the way yeah. when we're not with the load, but when we're um, empty, picking up, or just waiting for a load. And that's been a fun way to see friends and family or spend a weekend um, in Nashville or whatever yeah. floats your we've boat. Got friends in Nashville. We've hung out there for a weekend. Friends in Indiana, which is our favorite place to stop. Because there's lots of trees. Yeah. I love seeing the green. Um, California, California. Arizona. I have a son in California. That's always fun when we get to see him. Uh, California can be a little bit of a hard area to go to because it's not the most trucker-friendly area. But um, being in an expedite truck, um, it makes it a whole lot easier. I couldn't imagine driving a tractor trailer through yeah, California. No. That would be rough. We, we've got it pretty easy compared to other other truckers. Yeah, especially <laughs> parking. So yeah. parking, just number one, even if there's lots of places to park, backing up is a whole lot easier and less intimidating. And as you're on the road, parking spaces get limited. Yeah. And we've always been able to squeeze in somewhere. Yeah. Or Maybe you've out. heard some horror stories or... You've been a tractor trailer driver before. Ninety um, percent of the time, I can squeeze this truck in somewhere um, when most trucks can't, or other trucks are stacked up, and so a tractor trailer can't maneuver into the spot. We can just come and zip right into it. Um, that's a huge plus Advantage. of expedite trucking and these straight trucks. Because that's the hard part about the trucking industry is parking. It's a big national problem. And being in an expedite truck like this, um, it really makes a huge, huge difference. Um, we have regular tractor trailer drivers come up to us all the time, both male and female, asking about how to get into these trucks. Because I'm sure one of their biggest issues is parking. Um, and mostly not being self-dispatch. You hear it all the time of, or maybe you yourself know, uh, having a dispatcher telling you where to go and telling you how many miles you're going to make for that week um, can be a little discouraging when someone else is in control of your paycheck. So it's a big plus to be self-dispatch working off of a load board it's it's almost like you're an owner operator but you're not because exam owns the truck and you're you're basically leased on with them so instead of paying a lease payment which we don't we don't pay anything physically or monetarily out uh, we work off of a split so whatever the truck grosses the gross profit for the truck minus toll and fuel uh, we get a percentage of that, and the percentage is pretty pretty dang fair. Uh, the longer you stick around with exam, the more opportunities you have to raise that percentage. Uh, we're going into our 12th month now with exam and with uh, FedEx, and we've had opportunities to increase our, our percentage of the gross. Um, so that is how we're paid, if you're wondering. People are probably wondering how the pay works, yeah. right? Yeah, everyone always wonders how they get paid. Uh, we get paid once a week, every Friday. Every Friday. Initially, like any job, it does take two weeks of putting in the time before your first yeah, paycheck. Yeah, when you first start, yeah. But then after that, it's every Friday, which is really nice and consistent. Yeah. It does vary, of course, between like how many loads you've done, and there's a cutoff, so... Some weeks we might get paid for just doing one load and getting the paperwork turned in. And then other weeks we might get paid for two to three loads because how the paperwork figured out for that week. Yeah. So it does vary. It's not a like set payment every week. Right. But, um, but it's good pay. Yeah. The pay is really good for the time that you put in. Of course, there is downtime. Um, it might be true. I don't know. We've never been tractor trailer drivers getting paid 
you know, 50, 60, 70 cents a mile, whatever the going rate is. So we don't know what that's like, um, but we can say that for the work you put in, uh, the pay is really good. Um, there is downtime, so that's something to consider. That's what's nice about having these big sleepers that are behind us is having a big TV, having a fridge or microwave. We have 40 gallons of water on board, uh, for, uh, fresh water in a tank. Um, you don't have to always be eating fast food all the time. Yeah, which is um, which gets old. Yeah, you might want to have some movies if you have a DVD collection, if people still have those. <laughs> yeah, we've got John Wayne on DVD. But it is nice <laughs> to have some sort of DVD or download. Yeah, download music because the Wi-Fi isn't always yeah. great. Because the trucking industry is happy to be working on the weekends, and we do get loads over the weekend. We've got a load coming up soon, picking up on Friday, and going from Utah all the way to New York, twenty-one hundred miles over the weekend, and we deliver on Monday. But sometimes, because most businesses are closed, um, you know, 80% of the industry is uh, closed on Saturday and Sunday. So probably two or three times a month, you're going to just be down over the weekend. So you'll want to have something to do, something to watch. You can look for places to go. One time we were in um, Chris Disney World, Orlando. Yeah. We were in Orlando. And we were down for two or three days in between loads. And we caught an Uber and went to Disney World, ate food, walked, walked around, around <laughs> rode a fun. big hot air balloon thing up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's things to do. You don't have to just sit in your truck. Some people do. They never go anywhere. We catch Ubers and go get massages when we're down. Go get some good food. Yeah, go get good food. Um just kind of depends where we're at. Yeah, the Uber the Uber Lyft thing comes in handy um, during downtime. But if you're proactive, and uh, we'll have we'll have videos about how to be as proactive with your load board as you can, uh, your downtime will be pretty limited. Um, and, and most then, and some of the time, really, on your downtime, you, you just want to sleep and catch up, yeah. anyway. So. <laughs> Especially if you're the night driver like me. <laughs> Uh, that's another thing to consider. This is Expedite. We do run um, 1,500, 2,000 miles. And straight. straight. So, yeah, we have our shifts down. And they pay you for that, but it's it, it can be exhausting. Um, so you'll want to decide who's going to be the night driver and who's going to be the day driver, and you'll probably want to stick to Schedule. that person being night and day. Um, they do have pretty big beds in the back especially compared to regular tractor trailers. These aren't just the tiny little bunks. They're like a twin size to a full size mattress, depending on uh, what sleeper you get. Um, our old truck that we first started in had a bigger bed. So that was nice. We could both sleep in it decently comfortably. Uh, this one has a bigger kitchen area, uh, which we'll have a video on showing it off later. Um, and it's more of a twin size. It's more of a little twin crunchy. size. <laughs> little crunchy. <laughs> so it's a little hard for both of us. Waffles always gets to sleep good no matter what. Um, but He's yeah, asleep that's, right now. That's, that's, that's one of the things is, is this is Expedite and this is, um, you know, 800 miles super quick, uh, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 miles um, and you know, 48 hours to less than, less than depending. Um, but, but it's good. The pay is good for it. And, and you run the miles and when you're down, you catch up on sleep. Yeah. <laughs> the other nice thing about this um, straight extended cab is it does have its own bathroom in it. Yeah. So we have a bathroom shower combo, yep. which saves us yeah not on, not only is it safer especially for i mean most areas we go to are generally safe but i'm just scared of the dark she's scared <laughs> of the dark and i always i always walk in with her just to just to play it safe 
Um, I'm really not worried about the other truckers out there. I've actually been surprised how uh, friendly and safe it is to be in a truck stop. I was a little worried about that. Um, but it's more of some of the areas you might go to. Uh, you'll want to play it safe. But having a, having a bathroom in the truck not only is safer, but you're not it's getting convenient. out every time you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, that's one of the reasons why uh, we chose exam. I uh, did a whole bunch of research. I talked to quite a few fleet owners. Um, there's some really great fleet owners out there. I've heard good stories about other companies as well, but uh, we've been happy with exam. And the reason we chose them from the beginning is they have bathroom trucks for brand new drivers. Right. Uh, you don't have to, how do they phrase it? Um, it's not, not work up to it, but earn like it. Like the uh, more veterans. <laughs> veteran drivers. There you go. That have been on their teams. Yeah. Longer. Yeah. And that's understandable if they, if they have older equipment. Um, as far as I know, don't quote me on this, but I could be wrong. I don't believe exam has any trucks older than four years old. Um, when we first started, our truck was only two years old and had a bathroom on it and we were brand new and the truck we're in now is not even a year old yet. And, um, and, and of course has a bathroom on it too. So that's something to consider. If you're asking other fleet owners questions, ask about bathroom trucks. And if you'd get it right away miles. or have to work oh, up yeah. to it. Yeah. Ask about mileage on the truck. Um, and if, uh, where the truck's going to be located at, um, what are some other good questions? You will have to typically get, um, per, pay for your own way to get to the truck. Yeah. You will need to be prepared to get to the truck. Um, I don't know of any fleet out there that'll pay to get you out there. Um, so you can drive or fly. Um, so going into know. start, um, with your training, getting your way to the truck and then having to wait two weeks for a paycheck once yep. you start working. So you want you to do be prepared. need to have a little bit of a nest egg yeah. savings saved Not up. Not huge, but a little bit. Just, just to be prepared for like yeah. a month's worth of income that yep. you would need saved. One of the other nice things that I really enjoy, I, I couldn't stand the corporate world anymore. I've been managers. I've owned my own business before. Uh, and I've been the employee who has to beg for time off. Um, and that's not this. Um, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice to have, it's nice to have my husband as my co, as my coworker. Yeah, that's always a plus. And we don't, you know. <laughs> and You have annoying employees and, you have to be part of every day. Right. Or, you know, one thing I didn't ever like about corporate stuff was meetings. I hate yeah, meetings. Meetings are annoying. So this is nice because there's no meetings to attend or yeah. hear. Um, we don't have managers no. hovering over us. There's no micromanagers. Exam isn't calling you every day. Hey, what load are you on? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, how much? They don't do any of that kind of stuff. They might check in once a week when you're new, maybe once a month when you're starting out. Um, or mentors might call you and ask you, you know, how things are going and how they can help you improve, but no, no one's hovering over you. And that's one of my most right. favorite parts it's, about it. It's a good, <laughs> nice thing. So if you're, if you are again, self-motivated yep. and um, a self-starter, know yep. how to, you do need to be a self-starter to yep. keep yourself busy. This is a good thing yep. to do. Yeah. So it's, it's never the same. Every day is always different. Um, one thing to consider is your pay is, is never the same. It's always different. Um, but more than likely, it's, it's going to be better than what you can make out there um, in the working world. Uh, you are getting rewarded, in a sense, for kind of giving up some of your daily freedoms. You pretty much are living in a truck while you're on the road. Um, but, but, the, it, but overall it's worth it. We've done lots of different things and we're, we're still continuing on with this. So 
Um, what it's are been the a other good things? fit for us. Yeah. What other things we should talk about is home time. Yeah. So in that, depending on where you live in the country, you might be able to be home every other weekend just yep. for a day or two, or you might need to work six weeks and then go home for a week. Yeah. It's flexible. Yeah. And if, if you're in the, the heartland of the country, if you're in Ohio or Kentucky, Indiana, uh, northern Alabama, Tennessee, Illinois, Illinois, I mean, you would have it. You'd have it awesome for home time because that's the hot spot. Uh, we're in Salt Lake City, so we have to go to the West Coast most of the time when we want to get home. Uh, but we still we still get we still get home often enough to enjoy the job. Um, but where you where your home is will have a factor in how much home time you get. We've never had an issue when with home time. No one's hassled us about it or held some requirement over our heads about it. So we we've been busy. really happy with it. We yeah. stay busy and and we catch some home time. Um, we'd like to move to indiana or tennessee or something because we know we'd be home even more <laughs> but but for now salt lake city works um i don't think there's anything else for this i one. think that's it so then yeah. in some other videos we'll go over more yep. of those points in further details so you yep. can have more knowledge and um it's been good talking yeah. to you